This is a video I have pondered about for quite a while now, as it is one of the leading topics that have been discussed in entertainment for almost a decade now. And whether or not you like it, dislike it, think it's stupid, or just think it should be the new norm, DEI is something that exists and it is in entertainment. Now what's more interesting of a question which I want to attempt and give my opinion to is does it have to be in the entertainment? And I know what a lot of people that watch my videos are going to say immediately that it's no, it, we don't need it, screw diversity, screw equity in, and screw inclusion. However, I do believe I have a bit of a different take. Good day ladies and gents, my name is Helzo and I'm discussing and today we're going to discuss the diversity, equity and inclusion and everything else that surrounds that acronym in entertainment. That means both gaming, TV series, movies, etc. Before I start discussing all of it, I just need to make one thing clear. I do not think that the current version of the DEI has any place in gaming, in TV series or any place in the entertainment industry. It is anything but inclusive. It is exclusive to people. It is exclusive to certain races and certain genders. It caters to including the misrepresented groups more than to actual talent without any sort of exclusivity and predominantly excludes white men, heterosexual women, the whole concept of a relationship between a man and a woman. It tries to erase the concept of the two genders, which is the biological fact, and it tries to turn women into bulky men with tits. And in addition, it creates products that solely focus on those things instead of gameplay or story progression on character development or story development which ultimately leads to bad products stupid shows and almost unplayable games that have come out in recent years you have undoubtedly watched clips about star wars outlaws and all the bugs that this absolutely multi-million dollar project has had since its release you've seen the downfall of concord you have seen the absolute abomination that is thus born you have seen the non-interest agatha all along you have seen the absolute desecration of talking through rings of power and all of this is made by a wide group of people who specialize in their own version of dei which pretty much can be summed up by we want our kind of people that are diverse and misrepresented and push to the bottom without any sort of chance to get in life we want to give them a chance while excluding everyone else who has been privileged even though these people have been more privileged than anyone else because they get hired without any sort of talent any sort of specialty or any sort of background experience and to battle this i want to show you something that is very readily available this is the wikipedia page for diversity equity and inclusion this portrays the origin and what it used to mean and I just want to scroll down here and take it to history in the United States. So, DEI policy emerged from affirmative action in the United States. The legal term affirmative action was first used in executive order number 10925, signed by President John F. Kennedy on 6th of March 1961, which included a provision that the government contractors take affirmative action to ensure that applicants are employed and employees are treated fairly during employment without regard to their race creed color or national origin in september 1965 president lyndon johnson issued executive order 11246 which required government employers to hire without regards to race religion and national origin and take affirmative action to ensure that applicants are employed and that employees are treated during employment without regards to their race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. What does that mean? That means that everyone should be hired and treated throughout their merits and regardless of their race, religion, sex, and so on. And this is on paper amazing. It basically guarantees you that you will be hired for what you know and your expertise and your background without anyone looking at the color of your skin or your sexual orientation which 
is exactly what needs to happen when you're hired like that you're hired because you have worked or studied hard and the company that hires you is recognizing this and wants to use your talents and your knowledge and they don't care if you're black white japanese or some sort of multi-colored being that just landed on planet earth as long as you have a national id and we can transfer this exact methodic into the games and tv shows themselves see we have had diversity for much much longer than a lot of people know if you watch star trek the next generation you'll see a lot of things that might be considered woke by some people same thing with the orva which copies a lot of star treks loosely and it brings them to a a bit more modern setting and i have seen some debate that the orva especially season three new horizons is woke and i must tell you something i watched this show at least five times through and out and i didn't find anything woke in it what i found was exactly what i'm trying to tell in this video i have found inclusivity i have found diversity and i have found equity however it was not the focal point of the entire show it was included in the entire show and it made for pretty interesting stories because it the writers took time to develop them and not just place them as something that needs to be there but they integrated them into the story very well and the decisions in those episodes carried out for future episodes very well and you had let's say the Selean uh, people who are much stronger and we mostly see women on the crew Selaeans that are much much stronger than men we had that in Star Trek we have seen the female dominated uh, race that uh, is trying to make a peace treaty with the Orville and uh, with the Federation we have seen that in Star Trek which is 40 years ago and I know how some people can think that the Oro is absolutely woke because if you see it from an outside perspective and just hear some of the stories then you would say oh, yeah another woke show but no there is a small difference but a very valid one of being woke and being smart about it and Seth MacFarlane is someone who is very smart about how he includes all those politics all those viewpoints and just makes either fun of them with Family Guy and American Dad or just explains them through and throughout in a very concisive way making a very well balanced show and this is the, exactly the point that I'm trying to make. You don't need to be either right, left, up, down, south, east, whatever. The best part that you can be is be in the middle and just incorporate all the best things from all sides. And that's what Orville is. It incorporates things from all sides, from every viewpoint. It stays neutral. It doesn't engage in pandering to one side or the other and it just focuses on providing you with a good story with fleshed out characters with good episodes and with entertaining visuals which is what every form of entertainment these days should focus on see when talking about tv shows in particular people want to see things that they can relate to however that does not mean that they need to see themselves or someone who preaches the same exact ideology as they do in real life. In the end, entertainment is an escape and it's an escape from reality and it's a way for people to just take a moment and dive into either a fantasy world or a crime world or a sci-fi world and just relax, imagine and let the adventure take them to new horizons and new new places that they haven't thought of. No matter what kind of shows do you want, you wouldn't want them to burden you with real life politics that are with you every part of your day. You need to have a touch of reality with a lot of relaxing things that you wouldn't see in your everyday life mostly. Same is with gaming. People don't play games in order to relive their uh, real life situations they play games exactly because they want to escape the real life and just dive into somewhere where they can be the hero or they can be the mastermind or the builder or even a simple miner that just gathers resources and then builds houses and herds sheep 
and if you want something more complex you do have games for that which do touch upon some life politics but never exclusively lean towards one side or another the, the mass effect franchise or at least the first three games did that extremely well they touched upon real politics they touched upon stuff like racism sexism and all of those stuff like that but it was all just included as something additional to the main storyline you had an epic space adventures with imminent threat looming in throughout all three games that you had to battle and you had to make the best choices in the right time in order to save humanity with the very real threat that you might not succeed and just to fill out your journey throughout all that you had romances that didn't exactly limit themselves to one sex or another you had a lot of side quests that can either make you a better or a worse person in the game and while this is a very active part of the game it's not the main focus of it and that's exactly what needs to be in the games of today i think that if you have diversity and inclusion as part of the games then it has to be something that is in first place optional to explore as well as to be true because trying to include people just for the sake of inclusion and disregard of lore gameplay or even uh, logical sense is not inclusivity this is just replacement and this is just using them as tokens for your agenda you're just being like yeah we're very diverse very inclusive here we have a black guy here we have a black woman here we have a gay couple here why did we take him there why did we include him in the game nobody knows but we're inclusive we have ticked the box love us are we part of the club now and this is stupid because it's the opposite of inclusivity it's exclusivity you're excluding the good storyline the good characters the fleshed out characters the storylines the choice that we can make and choose which uh, what we can do as a character and who we want to be the dragon age velgard is one of the latest examples with uh, their character modifications with top surgery scars which take you to the whole trans debate and surgeries uh, that people do to themselves to cut off their boobs you don't need that to be represented in a video game you can be whatever you like and i am for sure certain that even women that go to transition and they cut off their boobs to become men don't want to see someone with a huge ugly scar on their chest they would want that scar gone and for them to just be normal and to not show that they have been through something they want to be as into it as possible and i am absolutely sure that they wouldn't want their scar to be shown all across the world for instance i don't make my own clone when i play mass effect or a game that i can have richer character customization i usually play someone with a short hair or without hair anyone or someone with a lighter or darker skin i just customize myself to look as cool as possible to be like yeah okay this is cool i don't even have that much uh, interest in uh, customizing uh, my characters at all because in the end i want to immerse myself into the gameplay do i do it yeah to a point but it's not the most important thing for me for me always for games especially the most important thing will be the development of the story the development of the world my character development throughout the game and the whole gameplay and world immersion this these are for me the most important things that i look for in a video game i don't care about who's fucking who or who's gay or who's not it's not that important yeah you can include it but don't rub it in people's faces that's the problem and one more problem that we have is making female characters into these huge bulky tanks that just overpower everyone i don't think this is necessary to do because women have a lot of different skills when it comes to fighting or managing the world than men have yeah they won't be as strong as men however they are slimmer than men they're more agile than men they're more uh bendable than men which you may take that as any way you want but if you have watched some of the older uh, batman games you know what i mean also they have the power of seduction they have other weapons that they can use and when you do that you just portray a more realistic view of a woman you just don't just portray her 
as a man with tits who is just ultra strong and ultra masculine even though at the same time you denounce masculinity and toxic masculinity and whatever it just shows a double message and a double standard that i don't think you even realize how idiotic it looks at times and i'm sure with the right formula all of this dei nonsense can be overcome and can be included in the best way possible and i think it even is right now you do have female characters in every game now you do have uh some games that do it smartly black myth wukong doesn't have a lot of those but whatever it does it includes them in a very smart way stella blade is one of those more recent inclusions where a female can be both absolutely visually appealing to the male gamers and absolutely a badass fighter for the female gamers and you might think that i'm talking like a chauvinistic pig or just someone over overly sexualized male gazing pervert however you have to realize that when you have a product that you want to sell to people you have to include all people and no matter what your feelings are percentage wise the gaming population is comprised mostly of men and visual pleasure of seeing a beautiful woman uh, kick ass on the screen or just be in uh, tight clothes and everything is something that does help sell the game it's not the only thing but let's be honest every little thing helps and when you remove all the little things you have games that nobody wants to play and i'll just include again dustborn and concord what happened there you didn't have anything that actual gamers like you had things that activists might like but activists aren't gamers they're just creatures on the internet and they don't really buy the games and they don't really engage in all this uh, obsessive gaming and reviewing of the games and being a loyal paying customer for a long time so if you cater to gamers and if you cater to everyone equally and inclusively then you can include dei in a very smart way as some games have done so in the past and you can also include talented people without any reservation towards race to do work on your games and not just exclude white people and hire diversity hires in order to fill quotas without focusing on what is most important talent and experience if you do that then you might incentivize more people to actually study for what they want to do and not just be a screechy activists that present themselves as game developers which ultimately results in a bad product both visually and story-wise and i know that if game companies can do that the tides can be turned and all of these failing companies right now can start making profit again and can start producing good products for us the consumers so we can enjoy we can pay and we can be loyal customers for more many 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 years to come anyways that's all i have for today thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it please press the like and subscribe button to my channel join my membership tier and receive the awesome perks that i have placed for you follow me on my socials and support me on patreon where i raise money for homeless animals and animals in shelters all of the links are down in the description below. Thank you, I have been Helzo and this was disgusting. Cheers and stay fresh.